What's happening guys, Dan here. The Speed Shop Camaro Edition. Shop's trash, don't worry. We'll take care of it eventually. Where we left it last, this thing had been kind of slapped together. We got the front end with a grill all together, all blacked out. I gotta get headlights, I gotta get some little clips and whatnot. Um, but today I actually wanna focus on the interior. We've been kind of neglecting it. It has turned into a bit of a storage unit. Yikes. So we gotta get that all kind of cleaned out. Uh, I have a carpet kit for it. We have door panels for it, which people tell me it won't fit. The, the deluxe, if it doesn't, something with the deluxe panels, I have regular panels. Cell tappers fix everything as far as I'm concerned, but I'd like to get those test fit into place, the carpet in. Um, we have some mismatched seats. I have one seat bottom, which is a little beat, and then I have a seat top, which is in nice shape, but they don't match. So I'm hoping we'll put them together and they'll just kind of be what it is. My other concern this thing was mini tub, so I'm hoping it even fits. That is another main concern, but whatever. I like to do that, and before we, well, as with the carpet down, I wanna do some wiring. I have a wiring harness. Is there stuff on the camera? Anyways, uh, I wanna put a wiring harness in it. A uh, real simple one, just a 12 or 15, or whatever it is, generic hot rod circuit thing. Um, this thing's gonna have nothing special. I mean, obviously, starter, 12 volts to the coil, um, charge system, headlights, taillights, wipers, uh, and power to the HVAC. We're not doing power windows, power locks, um, AC. And does it even have a radio? No, there's no radio, there's no nothing in this thing. Uh, it'll be pretty bare bones as far as I'm concerned, but that kind of is what I enjoy about this car. It's a bit of a stripper model. You know, manual brakes, manual steering, you know, saw lifter, like it is archaic. Muncie four speed to 12 bolt, like this stuff was like cutting edge in 1967 and here we are now in 2024. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna kind of keep working. We'll clean up a little bit. I have a list of stuff I gotta get plugs, PCV valves, uh, all sorts of stuff on this uh, motor. But yeah, it looks like something. Like I said, I've been saying before, I wanna get this thing so it runs and drives on its own power. I'd like to drive it out of the back or the garage. Hopefully it drives and it's not coming apart again, but if it is, it is, what are you gonna do? So uh, first things first, I wanna get the trunk lid dialed because I'm using a screwdriver. So I went out and bought all sorts of stuff. So we have new ignition switch, with keys, door locks, and this is actually the trunk, so all it is is basically a door lock. It has this long kind of deal that goes in it, so we'll plunk that in there. Oh, it's even got a little gasket and a little clip, and that will be that, and then hopefully the trunk lid will work. Without having to screw around with a screwdriver, that's a hassle. Let's get the camera set up, get this in right quick. So, this is a very simple, thing to install. Basically, through this hole, it gets into your little latch there and there's a little slot. That's why a flathead screwdriver will work or whatever, and back in the day, you guys would just punch these out, you know, the wrecking yard and whatnot. And this is basically the screwdriver. All it's gonna do is turn. Now, it does have a little gasket on it, and we might as well put that on there because we care here at DD Speed Shop. Let me just see. Uh, it's got a fat end. What is going on here? Hang on, hang on, we're getting there. Nope, maybe I'm not getting there. What is happening here? Having a moment? Two side by side. Let's go this way maybe. Is it not getting a gasket? Is that what's happening live right now? As I said, we'll put that on later. Um, we want key down just cause that's what I wanna do. So we'll put that in there. That'll go into a little latch. And then this little spring clip deal. Let me get her in there. A little hard to see. Is that bottomed out? Might have a little body filler in there holding it back, unfortunately. Oh no, there we go. So all that happens, we have this, we'll zip that off with a grinder right quick and that is as simple as it is. And ultimately we'll put them in the doors and it's the exact same deal other than instead of a 
a post or a rod or whatever it is all the way through, it will, uh, oh, that'll do. Oh, these are different. Hmm. Hopefully you don't need the original ones. Hmm. Hang on. Typically what these have is there's a little rod that sticks out that just levers things in and out. And I don't see them in this. So I don't know if maybe you have to take them off the old locks, which I don't think we have. Well, actually, you know what? There was a box of locks, so we'll see what we got. Maybe these are right, maybe they're not. So I found the old locks and they're chewed up, but this is different than I was expecting. Usually they have just a rod that kind of clicks up and down, which I don't know if you can see in here where my finger is, but if my finger is the rod, hang on, hang on. See my finger there? That right there is the lock. But if you look a little bit further down, kind of where my finger is now, it does the same thing. There's a little uh, kind of hole. It looks like there might be a little rod. And based on this, these little things are like locks where the rod will go in there and then you snap that over. So a bit of a different system. So we'll just go ahead and get to these later. But that's unfortunate, actually, I'll put these together too, so I'm not looking for stuff. There's going to be a little rod or something in there. Um, that being said, I have 68 doors that are complete, which I have to strip down anyways to get to, to when I build that 68, because uh, it has brand new doors. We'll probably steal some of the hardware from it. That's just kind of the way it is. Um, when I bought the two cars, there was kind of enough parts to make one car complete and another car into like a roller or, a, you know, 60% rust free shell type deal. So that was the purpose of it. As much as it sucks to steal from one car to another, it's just kind of the way it is in hot rodding. So uh, I'm gonna pull everything out of the interior. We have door panels, we have package tray, we have uh, hood hinges, which actually the hinges could probably go on now because the hood could probably go on right away as well. We're done screwing around under here other than just the, uh, the wiper deal. So yeah, all things cleaned up. We'll be back to the suite. Okay, so we got everything kind of out. I'm gonna vacuum up in here, but real quick, I got these plugs or whatever floor drains and uh, they just kind of fit around there. Now, I mean, a lot of guys kind of seam seal them in, stuff like that. I'm just gonna go ahead and put one self tapper in and that will be good enough. Collar done. Collar done. Well, if you ever want to take them out and they're seam sealed in, it's a friggin' nightmare. So, Why would you take them out? Well, I don't know. Cleaning it out, getting all the rat turds out. Mm -hmm. They were out when we were working on it. Yeah. And there you go. So we'll put two more in, vacuum, and then we'll come back when we're putting the carpet in. I'm just going to kind of throw it in there so it kind of relaxes overnight and uh yeah we'll see if we can run some wiring then once we run the wiring we can really put the carpet in which would be kind of sweet well, that should look like some then some seats huh all right we'll be all right back there's our address a list of fears on here um got a carpet kit i don't even remember what i ordered i assume it's a Black one piece, hopefully. Oh yeah. Oh, actually got the matting on the bottom. So I think we'll probably just lay it out actually on the ground here. Aren't you typically supposed to lay it out in the sun? Yes. It's 10 o'clock at night. I'm just saying if people, so that people know that we know that we're doing it wrong. If they're watching the channel. Unless it's their first time here, they know. Oh, yeah, we'll see. We we'll see how the weather uh, the weather goes tomorrow. We'll just put some boot prints on it. Oh, it's happening one way or another. Might as well get them out of the way. Um, we'll let this sit for a little bit, and then maybe tomorrow. It's actually supposed to be like 16 or 17 degrees tomorrow, I think. 
So if that's the case, we'll toss that outside. I can sit run the, in the sun. sit in the sun. Yeah, we'll let it. We'll let it bake a little. Get some UV rays, and then uh, yeah, we'll just kind of run run the wiring to the back. Pretty simple stuff. Uh, just fuel gauge and tail lights. We'll toss that in the trunk. Um, if that's the case, it's actually just kind of the carpet in, so I get to line the carpet instead of the hard floor. So we'll get that dialed in there. What else? We gotta pull the seat belts out. There's not a whole lot going on there. It'd be a pretty, pretty simple stuff. And this thing, it has, see this era of vehicle is kind of different. Well, not different, but it's different than Tri-5. So I hope I have the little connector, little plug in there, because that's what controls all the lights and whatnot, which I mean, worst case, I guess we could buy that or change these lights out to pigtail ones. But yeah, like on a Tri-5, each signal has its own light. And this is gonna be like, you know, gen, oil pressure, all that, which we're not gonna end up using. But the speedometer does work. So that's pretty sweet. Hopefully the fuel gauge does something. If not, whatever it is, what it is. But yeah, this is just... Pretty, pretty simple stuff. 68 Firebird, it says. Hmm. Well, it's gonna be in a 67 Camara. So we'll get that in. Hopefully, like I said, the, the stuff is there. This thing had a lot of the factory wiring and I kept it all. It was just an absolute disaster. I think this thing was a, was a runner driver probably in the 90s, so. And then just turned into a parts car, unfortunately. So yeah, we can get that in there and decide what we wanna do. I think I have a few different bezel pieces around it. I think I have some center bits. I'm really excited to make this thing look like a car on the inside. That's really gonna change the things up. So, but that's it for tonight. It's been a long night. We've got everything kind of cleaned up a little bit. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay, new day. I was up early this morning and I actually put the carpet in. Uh, look at that. I just cut a hole for the shifter and we put her in there. So that fits. So that's pretty slick now. We have both dogs here because Gibble Dog here keeps licking his paw. So we took him outside and then this one gets jealous. Franklin, this may be a hassle. So anyway, so this is Frank. She's very dumb. And that's Steve. Do you know someone said, that, why did you name a dog Steve? Because Freckles was taken. His government name is Stephen Bartholomew. Anyway, so this thing actually has a bunch of... There's a door there. It has a bunch of wiring. Hi, sweetheart. Um, and it's all factory in it, so I can probably reuse a lot of it, which is pretty good. However, it does have an earlier style column with like a little horseshoe. What is she doing? <laughs> She's trying to lay down. <laughs> with a horseshoe for... Uh, oh, slobbery. For the signals and all that for the column. So we have to get that dialed together. There'll be a lot of splicing and whatnot, but it's actually all there. We could probably take it out. That's gonna be the plan is take it out kind of nicely and we should be good. There's actually a lot of room under here, which is nice about this car versus like Tri-5s is all the wiper stuff is not under the dash. It's in the cowl. So it saves a lot of, a lot of room there. Now I have just like a universal wire harness here. What's, what are people here for the dogs? This is just a China job. Thanks, Frank. So we should be able to go through this right quick and just determine what's gonna go where and we can kind of lay in the wiring. Actually, nice thing about the Camaro here, instead of the wiring going in the floor, it has a little kind of pocket that all fits up the side. So that's pretty sweet. Wiring. This is where everyone gets all panic about it and stuff, and I hear you. But uh, maybe, maybe I'll put the table out. I had that organized on the floor. I'll put this on the table right quick and I'll just kind of snap through it right quick and we'll kind of show what's going to go where and uh, you'll realize how much of this you actually don't need, especially when you're building hot garbage. So we'll, uh, yeah, we'll do that. We'll get the table set up here. <laughs> As I said, wiring. These idiots. <sighs> This is their Camaro now. <laughs> yeah. So we'll just kind of lay some of this wire out. Oh, it's a little different window power. Oh, this must be a fancy kit I bought here. 
Um, so, first things first, the way they zip tie these in Taiwan doesn't really make any sense. They kind of put miscellaneous things together. Are we going back and forth with that? That's amazing. This is a little cute right now. I'm sorry. So, the guy who said they only wanted one shot of Steve in that video, don't watch any of this. <laughs> um, okay, so let's get back over here, please. So we have high low beam. This is all the ignition stuff. So this is going to be. Do you want to take a pause while you take pictures for yeah, the dogs? They look okay, cute. you can do that. Um, so this is a miscellaneous kit which I've never bought this brand before. I don't even know where I got it from. To be honest with you, it was on, it was on the Amazon couch. But it's kind of actually divvied up, not terribly. So this one here, everything is labeled, but we have uh, backup lights, turn trunk light. So we have a bunch of stuff like that. So that is what's going to basically go to the back of the car. Then we have to decide what goes what. Now this I think is going to be under hood. Guys quit wrestling. Um, so we have, yeah, this will have a bunch of sensors, power antenna. Uh, probably this big one's going to be main power wire. Solenoid power. Yeah, so that's, that's your 12 volts in. Um, what does this have? Yeah, so that's kind of that. We've got to figure out what does what. But essentially, this stuff here is going to be your ignition, and these are your turn signals and whatnot. And these are going to control the lights and whatever happens under hood. And this is probably under dash, I'm assuming, or some of it is. Uh, cruise control power. Oh, yeah, this is a fancy one. Gauge power, so that's what will power up the gauges. Fan power, yeah, so this is all under hood stuff, or under dash, sorry. And what is this? Sending, oil sending unit. Neutral safety, maybe? Tachometer, ooh. Temp sender. And some sort of ground, maybe? This one doesn't even have anything on it. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do, is go through here and snip some of this out that we're not going to use. Um, hi. Anything that has a sender in it, obviously we're not using that. Like the trunk power, we're not using that. The third brake light. I leave the third brake light in there because it's nice to run. If it doesn't have a fuel gauge wire, use that. It's already back there. So there's a little bit of stuff to take taken care of. It comes with some universal plug-in things for ignition switches. This is probably not going to work for anything we want to do. We'll probably be cutting that. Putting speed connectors on. And going from there, otherwise, I mean, we have kind of a bunch of junk there. This one has dual flashers, so it has uh, for four ways. I don't know if this thing even, 67, is that a year of four ways? Oh yeah, it has a four way switch. So we can do that. So that's pretty sweet. So yeah, it's a little intimidating. But once you kind of break it, Franklin. That was you. Steve the paint. But once we get it all kind of broken down, essentially this is the only thing that actually has to go right to the back. But we'll just make sure this is all taken care of and start uh, laying some spaghetti wire down. And then this thing, like I said, it has a nice little spot right here where the wire kind of fits and has these little hold down clamps, which are worn out. And I'll just kind of run She's back. Gonna go eat that. No, she won't. She's smart. And uh, yeah. That's kind of that. So I'm going to snip this yeah, she all up. It. <laughs> She's fine. She didn't eat it. But I'm going to snip this out and we'll be back uh, when we're laying in the car. <laughs> so have it all sorted. That's all the wiring we took out. Pile of junk. And I re kind of routed it. The way they put it together, I'm sure it's just however it comes out of the machine. So I like to change it up just a little bit. So we have. Ignition stuff, so this is what is going to run off of the key or go to the ignition switch. Some might be bridged together. Uh, ultimately, it grabs power from a few different spots to uh, power up, you know, uh, switch things or on, uh, like, you know, you got two clicks, like accessory and switch. There you go, and crank. This will be our power for the dimmer. This stuff here is what's going to go and control all our signal lights uh, or uh, at the column itself. Frankly, you're knocking the table. So that's that. This here is, what is this? Oh, this is under dash. 
that will control the brake light switch and like the uh, when you, you know when you hit the turn signal, it'll flash on the uh, at the bezel. That's what that is. This goes to the back of the car, so this will be tail lights, reverse lights, fuel gauge. Uh, actually, a fuel pump, which I left in just cause. So that's that. These ones are what? Oh, this is fuel gauge to the front. So that's that. Um, this is going to be under hood. So I broke it up into two. It came in one big loom. So this, again, it's. I know it's a lot of wiring, but once you kind of start snipping, uh, snipping stuff out and put it in uh, in play, and it's so long. This will be our start wire, main Franklin, power wire. Franklin. Good dirt, alternator, coil, <laughs> and uh, okay, come on, get in here, get in here. So that's that, Something. and then all these will be going to the front, so this is headlights, turn signals, running lights, basically we have the back but to the front, and then over here is the remainder of the stuff, so radio, wipers, HVAC, um, fan, I think this is what powers up the gauge cluster, the brake light switch, just all the stuff where the power comes from. So this will be under dash. So there you go. It's really not that complicated. Um, we'll kind of, we're not going to get all hooked up today. Obviously the lights will just run kind of front and back. We'll get the ignition hooked up. We don't care about any of the lights and we just got to get whatever with the bare essentials we need hooked up so the ignition switch will work and then it'll crank. We do still got to run and get some battery cables and, and crap like that, but that's that. Now, We'll get Franklin supervised and we gotta get under the dash and pull out all the old stuff because none of these are terminated. And if I can, why'd you bring both dogs out? And if I could use some of the connectors in there to make my life a thousand times easier. Idiots. So here's the old um, setup. So that's the old fuse panel. And this is the bulkhead that goes under the hood, which I don't think we're gonna use. Um, what there actually was jammed up in there was the ignition, which is kind of sweet, so it actually has the factory clip, but it's melted through and junk, and a wiper switch. So that's, that's sweet. Hopefully that'll be able to kind of work. And uh, yeah, that's kind of that. We, we are unfortunately left with kind of a sizable hole we have to fill, but. Franklin, quit licking the metal. Inside the car, all I left, iron maybe, all I left in the car was the uh, the wiring for the column itself. So that's that. So now, try and run this thing together. There's kind of a lot of garbage, but we'll go see what we can make happen. So let's just, uh, man, wiring. I do hate wiring. So, we can go kind of bit by bit. What do we want to do here? We want to make sure that stays. You know what? We'll just figure it all out. So, sorry, Steve. So, first things first, toss this in the car and this wiring here, which is going to be all the headlights and whatnot. Kind of fold in half. Jam through this hole. Can you pull through actually while I got you here? You see it? Yep, yeah, pull everything. Pull that through. All the way? Yep. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah, okay, keep going. That should be good. Now, yeah. Yeah, lengthen it out there so that's perfect. Now, what do you mean? Oh, I think there's doubled back. Oh, okay. Because they got a, they give you a lot of wire. Okay, we got an, no. That should be good. Now hang on, we got another, another set coming through. This is the engine stuff. Yeah. Okay, pull that through. Yep. Yeah. I like all the pretty colors. So you can pull both now. So they're kind of. Okay, that's good. So now we gotta figure out what went to the back. And I've mangled this. Okay, so this is gonna be steering and ignition, so we'll jam that in the 
non-existent dashboard. Guys, not right now. Quiet on set. Left turn. What is this? Oh yeah, this is what we want to take here. So, this all sorted. What is this stuff now? Guys. Guys, this goes up front as well. So now we have to decide how we want to run this. Dudes. Oh, Steve, your neck is wet. Ugh. Don't Gross. wrestle outside. Why do they only wrestle on the camera? I know, something? it's really weird. They were literally just like laying down. She's um, a showman. She's a showman. She's something. I'll give you that. Um, how do I want to run this? I should probably take this kick panel out. Um, okay, I'm going to take this panel out really quick, and I'll just kind of show you. We'll run this thing, but I want to run it nice and neat around the side. There's still actually a panel in there of all things. Who would have thought? Go calm the dogs. So, uh, Danny had to have a quick nap. Her I did not. One of two naps today. I uh, actually I went and I got a bunch of stuff. I didn't want to go to the store. Oh yeah, that's what it was. So I went to the store, got a bunch of things that we actually aren't going to use right now. But uh, so then why'd you go? Well, I have to go at some point. You know, we're coming over later. We gotta. That'll be an hour. Um, so we have really hooked up. I have my ignition switch. I put it all together, and uh, so it works. Now what I have to do is figure out. I looked at what the wiring diagram was. We have the factory stuff. But if you look at it, see how it's all kind of junk there. That's melted there. That's not a good. It's not a good connector in my mind to use. So what I had to do is figure out what did what. So in this thing here, we have power going to. I have a booster pack hooked up. So we got power coming in. Nothing else has power. Now if we kick it back a notch, so that would be if you're sitting there while listening to the radio. We have power. On accessory, hang on, hang on, where's this? This is terrible test light. There's oh, no power. Why is there no power? We have a background. What? What happened there? Yeah, that's hang really on. embarrassing. For no, you. no, we're good. I was just pulling it. I was trying to show you people. Okay, so we have accessory power, but there's nothing anywhere else. This is actually a ground wire. So that's that. Now, we go to accessory on. So this would be after you you know key on and it goes back to just running. We still have power accessory, but now we also have power on. And this uh, this ground is really screwing a guy here. We have power on this accessory one as well as that. Now this one here is the important one. This is ignition. So when you kick on, that's what's going to trigger the starter. So that has its own independent thing. Now. Here's the only thing you have to watch. So this, this one's useless. We think, okay, we have power on that, we have power on that. Now this one is what the radio is going to be on and stuff like that. Now here's the reason why. This is like where the coil is going to be. So if we go to crank it, it kills the power on crank. Danny's learning here. But if we go to this side, which also has power, it keeps power on crank. Eh? Eh? So now what we're going to do... Wait, why does that matter? Well, so like, let's say if you're trying to start the car, you're spinning the starter, but if it doesn't have power to like the distributor and the coil, it won't run. So you want to have it on the one that stays on. Exactly. Got it. So what that does is now we have these two. Now this plug here is for accessories. So this will control radio and like the wipers and stuff like that, which ultimately don't need power all the time. This one here, this, this red wire is the one that we're gonna have that needs power all the time. Or, uh, no, sorry. Yes, that's right, I think so. It'll make sense in the end here. But that's what we gotta do there, is just make sure that the coil and stuff like that has constant power, everything else can just have it on accessory. So I'm gonna snip all the ends off of this, we'll terminate them, and I'll just use uh, spade connectors to put together. It's a little hokey poke, but it should work. Once we have that all dialed under here, we can then uh, pull the wires up front and make sure that uh, starter and uh, solenoid and, and coil and all that stuff all has power properly. And then in theory, it should just start with the key. That's where I want to get today. Start with the key, and then we can worry about the rest of the wiring some other time, but that's just kind of a cool little, another win, right? Then we can work on interior and actually see if it'll uh, shift gears and stuff. 
So Danny has to go get her camera to do something, and then uh, we'll splice this together and make it run. Yeah, Danny, I'm actually really impressed with these work shirts. Yeah, they're work pretty shirt. good. Like, you're putting it through its paces, and like. I'm hard on gear. Hot dang. I can't believe it hasn't like ripped or caught on fire yet. <laughs> I'm honestly I'm very impressed. It's good stuff. Available at DD Speed Shop Johnson. Oh there you go. <laughs> okay. So I hooked up the ignition. Um I might have been a little off on the what colors go where, but ultimately this is what we want. So now I just brought back three wires from under the hood. So this one is the coil wire. So this is an a important one because this is the one that's obviously going to let the car run if we have power to this i like that it's pink oh well, yeah that's you know if we have power to this then uh it'll run so that's on the on position but if we click it to the accessory there's nothing so on and if we go to crank ow well, i stopped myself there the corner so it still maintains power so that's perfect now this one, this is just a random wires to kind of show you here. This is the um, coil or alternator exciter wire. So it just gets 12 volts. Oh, this damn thing here. My ground is a problem. So we have 12 volts, but then when we go to crank, it kicks off, which we knew it was gonna do. And now this one, this is the one that's gonna trigger the starter to party. Make sure we have a good ground. So it'll have nothing on every single spot except for except for when we're cranking. So we know that works. We're golden. We can now <coughs> come on, Danielle. This is why you don't get a microphone. So I don't need a microphone. <laughs> so now we can go under here. And with all that hooked up, all we have to do is run, this is the power wire, so that's 12 volts. We have 12 volts to the starter with a jumper. We have to wire this into the starter. We have to wire this into the coil. And it should run off the key. These other wires are as useless. You don't need these stupid wires. No, this is all, this is all good stuff. What is this one? Oh charge wire so this is like the alternator wire and stuff like that so we gotta get that all kind of taken care of but at this point now we can kind of be a little more organized i think the only other wire we don't have under the hood which we need is uh the wiper power i left that under the dash so we'll sneak that through as well and then it'll be a lot of terminating dominating yeah on a upcoming video so stay tuned for that but in the meantime we're just going to put this all together and make it look pretty and uh, forget about it under the hood. Because you know what you don't need to drive? Lights. So we have the wiring just kind of rigged up. Like, you know, I, you know I, I cleaned up just what I was gonna do for the front wiring. We got that where it's gonna be. I left the wires long around back because I've learned before, if you string everything up and you have it all nice and tight and organized and all that, then you have to change one wire and everything has come apart, it's a disaster. So the coil wire is way too long, the trigger wire on the starter, way too long, but we wanna make sure we get away from the exhaust and all that sort of stuff. Um, I kind of pumped a bunch of fuel in it already. I was messing with, uh, I think this is the the rod, the factory rod for the carburetor. I made like just a cheap little spring with a terrible little return on it but it should run at this point. Um, I'm thinking with the touch of a key and I can work the throttle with my hand. We're in neutral, give it a bump. Okay, contact. Lots of oil pressure. She runs, look at that, I'm gonna pump the gas and crank it. Wow, this thing sounds good. Look at that. See if it'll run long enough, we'll shut it off with the key and not let it die. 
Nice. And oh yeah. That's pretty exciting. That's very exciting. So that's where we're gonna leave it. We have a lot, a lot of wiring to do, but at this point it can yard drive. Um, next I want to get interior in. We have the wiring run. I it's tempting just to keep going on that, but I really want to see if I can back out of the garage under its own steam, so that'll be kind of interesting. But uh, let's disconnect all this so we don't have any issues. Wow, that's kind of like a milestone. Last weekend, we just got it running, and now this weekend, hopefully, we can maybe back it out. So uh, it needs two seats put in, or a seat put in, realistically, but I do want to put the back seat in, put the door panels in, like make it presentable. Like, let's put it together, not take our time, but, uh, well, Drag Week John gave the advice of just, if it happens, it happens. And when it happens, it happens. And I'm like, you know, I'm really starting to take that now. Like, enjoy a little wins, take your breaks. And ultimately, I think you get a much nicer car out of it in the end. So, thank you very much for watching. As always, please leave a comment below. Subscribe to the channel. Really helps us out big time. And uh, we'll see you on the next one, which we're bolting seats in this whole girl.